Hey, Pastor Steve here, and I have a revelation that the Lord gave to me today. He showed me the steps on how to receive a miracle. Does that sound like something you might be interested in? Well, I encourage you to grab your Bible, sit down with me, and let's take a look at some of the things that he showed me today. So what are the things that we need to do to be able to receive a miracle? Well, that's just it. Most of us are trying to do things to receive a miracle, but the reality is, is that God doesn't want you to do anything but believe. So that's not the only step. There's lots of steps be between these different things. And if we look throughout the Bible, we're gonna start seeing this revelation come to pass in every single one of our lives if we simply apply these simple steps. So take a look at this. Now, the first of the six steps that I'm gonna go over with you is this. Seek first the kingdom of God. <laughs> that one's easy, right? If you're looking for a miracle to come to pass in your life, shouldn't you be looking for something to happen in your life? I mean, shouldn't you be looking to God himself? If he's the miraculous, all-powerful, um, miracle-working God, then he would be the one that we should be seeking after. If we want these miracles to come to pass in our lives, all we need to do is simply look after him. Matthew 6.33 tells us to seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything that you need. Now, it's not just what we need, it's what we, what we desire. God wants to give you the desires of his heart, but what if your desires were his desires? So in other words, what if you were to ask God, Lord, I want you to have the desires of your heart. You know, what that allows God to do is, he's got a much greater imagination than all of us. He knows what, exactly what we need. He knows exactly what will make us happy. He knows exactly what is gonna make us prosper in the way that we need to prosper right now, right this very moment in our lives. So why not go to that step? So the next thing we wanna do is, we wanna make sure that we're doing this out of love. We're not doing this out of selfishness. We're not out there trying to do this for our own gratitude or our own benefits. If I am doing this out of love, didn't Paul say that, you know, I, I can't do anything without love involved in it? Second Corinthians, or First Corinthians chapter 13. Saying. So what we want to do then is, is we want to take a look at this. We want to do this all out of love. Now the basis for this entire study is out of Mark chapter 6. And this, these are the verses that God showed me this morning and these different steps that we see. So the, the second step that we want to do is we want to do it out of love. It says in Mark 6.34 that when Jesus saw the huge crowd, he stepped from the boat and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. Jesus loved them so much that he got out of the boat and he had compassion on them. He was looking for a vacation. He wasn't looking to minister to anybody. He was looking for some place to sit down where they could do, he'd just enjoy a nice quiet meal, rest and relax, listen to the positive testimonies that the disciples had had from when they were out preaching the gospel. He wanted to hear their stories. And yet he, he gets out of the Bible, out of the boat, and there's 5,000 men and all their kids there and their wives. So you're talking about probably somewhere in the neighborhood of seven to 10,000 people standing there waiting for Jesus saying, hey, uh, Jesus, uh, we, we need something from you. And they weren't looking for food. That What they were looking for was to be ministered to. He had a healing service. He had a ministering service where he was teaching them many things. So this is incredibly important for us to recognize that we have to have compassion just as Jesus had them. And in fact, we read that in Luke 6, 36, right? It says, you must be compassionate just as your father is compassionate. Once I applied love to this desire, once I applied love to what I'm expecting God to do for me, now all of a sudden, that opens up the floodgates and anything is possible. So if I'm doing things in the positive influence of love, then I can do just about anything or God can do anything for me because I'm expecting it to be done out of love, not out of anything that I can do. And that, that actually says that what we need to do then is, is we need to start taking a look at this aspect. We wanna make sure that when we do these things that we do it out of love. We don't want to labor of it. So if we, that's our third step. We don't wanna labor for it. If you notice this in Mark 6, 37, Jesus said, you feed them. Now, when he said this, what he's telling them is, is that, hey, you know what? I want you to have compassion on those people. I want you to feed them. I want you to take what you have and give to them. They didn't have anything. Well, I mean, we found that they had six loaves and five and two fish. But I mean, the reality is, is that they, they felt like they didn't have anything. And Jesus said, I want you to give them what you have. And isn't that love in, 
in its perfect sense. So if I know that I can do that, then I know that I don't have to labor for it, which again is our third step. So I don't want to labor for it. If you look at what the disciples initially said in Mark 6, 36, it says, send the crowds away so they can go to the nearby farms and villages and check this out, buy something to eat. They thought that the only way that these people would be able to get their provision is if they bought it. Do you see that the only way that you can get provision from the Lord, if he gives you money, or if you spend your hard-earned cash on something that you need, what if God were to give it to you? What if God were to multiply what you already have? But we're gonna to get to that in a second. In Mark 6, 37, the very next verse, we see with what they asked, we'd have to work for months to earn enough money to, to buy food for all these people. They're still looking at what it is that they can have, that, that they can go out and they can do for. They're thinking that they're gonna to have to work for this to be able to feed these people or give up everything that they have. But the reality is that they didn't have enough for that. So what we wanna do then is, is we wanna recognize that this is all a part of grace. God is not asking us to go out and to work for his miracles. We can't earn it and we can't go out and we can't buy a miracle. Regardless of what you see on Christian TV, the reality is is you cannot buy a miracle and you can't go out and you can't earn it. You have to realize that God wants to give it to you because he loves you. The next thing that we see is number four. What do you have available? What do you have? What, what do you have in your hands? What do you have in your house? Remember the widow who, who Elijah said, go out and borrow not just a few pots? She went out and she got whatever she had there. Said, what do you have? I've got oil in the house. And he multiplied the oil. In this case, what do you have? I want you to go out and take an inventory. How much bread do you have? And what Jesus says is this, it's Mark 6, 6 38. He says, how much bread do you have? Go out and find out. They came back and reported, we have five loaves of bread and two fish. This is important. What Jesus tell them to go out and look for? He said, go out and look for bread. The disciples still had a mindset of, well, I'm just gonna help out God a little bit, and here's two fish too. I mean, do you see that? He, he so I'd go out and look for bread. They went out and they found bread and fish. So they had more than what they originally thought, which is a key critical part of this as well. But the other part of this is, is that we don't have to help out God. But you know what? When we show up and we say, Lord, we have these other things, he doesn't rebuke us for it. He encourages us. He goes out and he does the things that we want, that we know that we need. And even if we make a small little error, he's not going to condemn us for it. He's not going to sit down and say, I told you to look for bread. You went out and found bread and fish. I'm not going to do the miracle. That's not how God operates. He's going to give you exactly what it is that you need. So check this out. This is the fifth step. It says, trust God to be your shepherd. I'm saying, well, what does that have to do with anything? But take a look at this verse. Mark 6, 39, then Jesus told the disciples to have the people sit down in groups on green grass. He didn't say have them just sit down. He said have them sit down in the green grass. Does that remind you of any scripture? I'll tell you what the Holy Spirit reminded me of. And probably you too. Psalms 23, 3. And he causes and he allows me to sit down in green pastures. Isn't that good? I mean, Psalms 23, he literally he literally becomes, he says, hey, look, tell them to sit down in these, in these green pastures. When they do that, then all of a sudden, they're able to actually receive what it is that they have. When we really realize that God is our provider of miracles, then we know that we can have anything that he said. You know, Psalms 115 tells us that the maker, may you be blessed by the maker of the heavens and the earth. The heavens belong to the Lord, but guess what the earth belongs to? mankind. Can't you claim those things? They're yours. Look, the sixth step in all of this is, is to allow God to bless what you, bless and multiply what you have. Mark 6 41 tells us this, Jesus took the five loaves and the two fish, looked up towards heaven and blessed them. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave the bread to the disciples so they could distribute it to the people. He also divided the fish for everyone to share. <laughs> There's two miracles there. Not only did he divide the bread, but he also divided the fish. Remember those fish, the ones that they said, well, here, here God, let me help you out with this. In spite of the fact that they were trying to do it on, them, on their own, Jesus still took two fish and fed well over 5,000 people with it. That's powerful when we look closely at it. Now, the last thing that we have to do is when you think, well, well, that's it. God's blessed it and he's multiplied it. But you know what else we need to do? We need to receive it. And that's our seventh step. 
We want to receive as much as you need. Not just what you need, but what you want. And this is the scripture that, that goes along with it. Mark 6, 42 says, they, ate, they all ate as much as they wanted. It wasn't that they ate just enough to take the hunger pangs off. They ate just enough so that they wouldn't faint on the way home. They had more than enough. And in fact, even for the disciples, he had an extra 12 baskets left over of fish and bread. Don't you think that that was pretty powerful for these disciples to say, well, I got my own basket of fish and bread. Yes, that's what God wants to do for you. He wants to work in your lives and help you to see all the wonderful, great things that he wants to do in your life. So if you allow God to work these miracles in your life and you follow these simple seven simple steps, it can actually help you because, receive that miracle that you're expecting from God. So remember, our first step is what? Seek the kingdom of God first. Our second step is to do it out of love. Our third step is to don't labor for it. Our fourth step is what do you have available? Our fifth step is trust God who is your shepherd. Our sixth step or our seventh step is going to be receive as much as you need. So if we can do those seven steps, then we can receive exactly what it is that God has in store for you. You know, I hope that this word was an encouragement for you. And if you need this miracle, God's going to work in your way, in your life, in the way that you know that you're going to be able to receive it most. Don't go out there and try and work for it. Just allow God to give it to you. And you know what? When you're able to do these things, then you can be a miracle going someplace to happen. I hope that that's the case. Well, God bless you. Feel free to share this on Facebook. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Any way that you want to do it, I encourage you to meet me here again for the next teaching that I have available. Well, God bless you, and I will see each and every one of you soon.